Maybe if I believe hard enough, Pete Buttigieg will see this video. Does America actually have high-speed rail? This seems like a yes or no question. Should be simple enough to answer. All right, let's see. Does America act, uh, actually have high-speed rail? What? Oh, yeah, no, this is what I thought. Amtrak's Acela Express, reaching 150 miles per hour, is the U.S.'s only high-speed rail service. So yeah, we got a Sella. It's that train that runs on the Northeast Corridor, a, a heavily trafficked stretch of rail that runs from Boston to Washington, D.C. to Newport News. Actually, I, I, I just remembered that I have to take a trip from Boston to Washington, D.C. Very, very soon. With a maximum operating speed of 150 miles per hour, a Sella should be able to make this trip in not very much more time than, um, let's see, 457 miles divided by 150 miles per hour. That equals three hours and two minutes. Sounds convenient. Let me go to their website and purchase a seven hours? What? That's the same as driving. And I don't drive at 150 miles per hour most of the time. So, new question. Why is Azella so slow? Let's let's try to figure that out. Okay, so the entire track of Acela from Boston to Washington DC is 457 miles long. So as I said, that means that a train going 150 miles per hour should be able to make the entire trip in three hours and two minutes. So why does it take seven hours? What is causing the almost four hour delay? Maybe like, um, like stops? Okay, so there are 16 stops between DC and Boston. So with some generous assumptions and some off-screen math, that should only come out to like an hour and a half of time that the train is actually at a stop. That's not enough time to account for this delay. So then where is all this extra time coming from? Sounds like it might be time to consult the National Railroad Passenger Corporation Northeast Corridor Employee Timetable Number 5 Schedules and Special Instructions. All right, so if we go to section 37B1, passenger trains and freight trains, maximum speeds and speed restrictions, unless otherwise restricted, we can see in these columns, the speed restrictions for trains on different sections of tracks. Acela trains fall into the A column for Acela. <laughs> that, that's not what it stands for, but it is, it is in that column. And my, my, my God. Well, this is the problem. So if you go through the speed restrictions over the entire Acela route, you'll find that there are only three sections of track where the train can go its top operating speed of 150 miles per hour. All of these segments are located on the stretch of rail between New York and Boston, and together they add up to 33.9 miles out of 457. So Acela can only go 150 miles per hour on 7.5% uh, of the total route. I guess it looks like the train spends a good amount of time going faster than 100 miles per hour in the states I just mentioned, but there are still a lot of places where it's like dipping below 50. And then on the section between New York and Washington DC, it's even worse. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Use, using total trip time again, seven hours, and total trip distance, uh, 457 miles, let me calculate average speed. So 457 miles divided by seven hours is equal to 65.285-7143 miles. I, I can be a little nicer actually and take out the time we're assuming the train is at a stop. So 457 divided by 5.5 hours, that's an average assumed moving speed of 83 miles per hour. That's slow. Acela's average speed over the route is only half of its top operating speed. Why, like, wh why is this the case? Why would we build train cars that can go 150 miles per hour when they won't even really go 150 miles per hour? Okay, so I've asked if America has high speed rail. The answer was Acela. Then I asked why Acela was so slow. And then the answer was speed restrictions that I found in an employee handbook. Maybe it's time for a more personal question. And that question is, is this even bad? Do I have unrealistic expectations? Is it bad if I expect a train to operate with an average speed near its top operating speed? Let's look at some examples from other countries. No, it's not bad. I am not the problem. Amtrak is the problem. What is Amtrak's problem? Why can Acela trains only go fast on 7.5% of their track? Why are there these speed restrictions? Oh, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Acela trains are running on ancient tracks. This means that like curves aren't banked enough for the trains to take them at high speed without tipping over. Also, there are bridges and tunnels on the route that were constructed in the literal 1800s. And like every time trains approach them, they have to slow down so that they don't die. They being the bridges. Oh, and, and the trains. Oh, and, and also everyone on board. 
Also, there are literally places where the line crosses roads, and any time it's possible to hit an automobile, trains fall under super strict speed restrictions. This means that Acela trains are regularly slowed down to under 40 miles an hour, which is just dumb. So, does America have high-speed rail? No, it, it doesn't. It has high-speed trains, but without the actual rail, that doesn't mean anything. Wikipedia says that the definition of high-speed rail is a type of rail transport that runs significantly faster than traditional rail traffic, using an integrated system of specialized rolling stock and dedicated tracks. America has the specialized rolling stock, but without the dedicated tracks, that means like tracks that are built for high speed with new tunnels and bridges and stuff and like that go over or under highways instead of crossing them, America's trains will continue to be <gasps> regular, regular speed. speed. So when Amtrak does this thing, which it's now doing, where it's like, we're going to spend a bunch of money to buy shiny new trains from France, slap a patriotic name on them like Avalia Liberty and raise our maximum operating speed by a grand total of 10 whole miles per hour. I'm just like, keep the old trains and use the money to build a f***ing better track. If we did that, the current trains we have could make a trip from Boston to DC in a little over three hours. I think that'd be pretty cool.